record shows he took the blows and did it Bert's way. Oh. Great Thank you. fucking episode. I just got a new phone. Congratulations. How many, how many? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it should be on. All right. Oh, Hold on. I'm going to take my belt off. If, are you going to have a drink if I have a drink? Yes. Okay. Sarah, you don't drink, right? I don't drink. I have to smoke weed, which okay. makes me sometimes extremely dumb, so I apologize. I'm going to put that I could, I, be, I could beat you a drum. Dumb. Did you know that I just found out the other day? Uh. It's Benjamin... And not Benjamin. Benjamin? You thought there was a, like, German. Yeah, I thought it was Benjamin. Aww. Benjamin. What it's, do you say? It's okay. I don't, you know, I don't say it right. I say Benjamin. Benjamin. I get it. I used to say, I say I said Peschetti until, like, a year ago. No. <laughs> well, that one's worse worse than Benjamin. <laughs> I said... I just think it make Bert feel better. I said soap popper until I was 30. Soap popper. I thought it was soap popper. I've seen other people have these words now. They talk about it. Yeah. You know when you're listening to a podcast, somebody says something. You know you said it wrong when they go, what, what, what did you just say? You're like, oh. well, I'm not going to repeat it because I know I said it wrong probably. You I know? thought it was nightmare. I still say it that way. Nightmare. And it's, you, you're trying to say? It's, apparently it's nightmare. nightmare. It's nightmare, but I had a nightmare. the way you say it, like nightmare, like nightmare. Nightmare. Is kind of also interesting. Like it's a reflection. And you know you can also choose, you night. can choose to say words differently. I do that. Like oh, I'll choose. I can't do that. <laughs> I just can't. You know, the thing is, because it's like I feel like, oh, Sarah, I do love I can't you do that. so much. I'm sorry I didn't heat my pool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, because no, that's her vagina. <laughs> you no, know, we um, we like to. I like to heat my pool to like in the nineties. Till it's yeah. it's still refreshing. And we basically and great. like take a bath together. But Bert, I had thought me and you would have a steak dinner afterwards. In my oh. head, I fantasized it. I didn't even ask you, so I said, "Well, I might be having dinner with Bert." I knew nothing about. I tried to get out of this. Aren't we eating at Bert's? And yeah, like, I'm making you guys, I, and because you guys are, because you're a vegetarian or vegan? Vegetarian. Are you not a vegan? Nope. Do, you, do, do you do cheese? Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, I'm making you falafel waffles. Hey, watch your mouth. Falafel waffles? Yes, and waffle irons have changed so much that you can now, take a look at this, you can pour the waffle batter in there, <gasps> and it just makes the waffle for you. But, uh, and I know, I, I oh. <laughs> I love when people have dietary restrictions. Is the air cranking? <laughs> Todd, it's ice cold air is coming out. It is. It's the really no, I was at a comedy club once. The cheap, this guy was cheap. And um, I should save this, but uh, he didn't have air conditioning. He had like a CD of air blowing and it would come out of the sound and you'd be like, oh, I hear it, but it I'm kidding. A CD of air. CD, CD is where you lost. Well, you know, you know there aren't CDs anymore. It's so funny. It was tape. It was tape when that joke, and I thought I'd updated Ooh, the CD. Smell this. That's a I'll joke you this. wrote down? No, I'll that was somebody that. else oh, did it. cheese. Pungent cheeses. That was the What's name that? <laughs> I don't know. The only thing Todd said in his rider is... You, I, did, I didn't say it in my rider. I go, I'm just... Wait. I said, I'm just not a fan of pungent cheeses. <laughs> and so and I he gets pungent cheeses. Oh, my God. Is I just have them as a prop. I oh, only have bird. Them. I, only, I love pungent <laughs> cheese. You do? It's a good dietary. Like, because a little, like, like uh, some cheddars, the ones you get, like, the, the big bag, there's not a lot of flavor. But when you get to put a pungent cheese on, you get the flavor of the cheese, and you don't have a lot of cheese. Also, your... Olfactory senses are maybe a lot of your taste experience. Your all sensory? That's olfactory. That means smell. Oh, for real? Yeah, but I used a hoity-toity word because I learned it. Todd, can I get you a cocktail? Yeah, I'll have a, what's your your vodka? Uh, Porosos? You, do you have any uh, brown? Do you, do, is your brand have anything brown? No, but we, buddy, we have, I have a ton of brown brown. Uh, yeah, anything brown? Let's go brown ice? today. I haven't given brown in a while. Well, this is... Brown is trouble, isn't it? Is, I don't know. Pull me up, bring all my brown in. Bert, you can't say that anymore. Bert, Bert. <laughs> Bert, Bert, Bert. Man, I have, I have such boundary issues. I like, I, I'm really into meat prints online. You know what a meat print is? It's uh, when you can see the dude's junk 
in like <laughs> I understand now. Yeah. Bert, I thought that was only a thing because I like dudes. Uh-uh. That you like guys do this to the breasts. They're like boom, boom, you know what I mean? Yeah. So but like I, I'll do that oh. to the crotch and then right go right to the comments to see if I'm the only one noticing. Oh buddy, mm -hmm. it's so fun going to comments when you know something's about to light up. Mm -hmm. When you go like uh these comments aren't gonna be and then the first comment is came running to the comments. Yes, <laughs> yeah. which is great. The comments the comments will really go, okay, I was thinking the right thing, or you know, it's very I love to go right to the comments. Do you like a bourbon whiskey? or a bourbon whiskey? Bourbon, whatever you have, I'll have. I'll talk Woodford Reserve, I think it's pretty good. And you know what, about comments that are funny and so, maybe soul bearing, you know how people say that everything's negative on the internet, and, and which there is negativity, but I always say, well, there's a lot of positivity too. Yeah. And when's the last time you went, me too, I say it to myself, I don't know why I get shy to do it, to go leave a nice comment. You'll cry, a video will make you cry, It'll inspire you, but I go over to the comments, I'll start to write one, and then I erase it. I, I, I don't know. It, I write I nice comments. I write nice comments all the time. Yeah. But you know what's so weird is about comments is sometimes, I don't read any comments now, but back in the day, I would misread a comment because I'm dyslexic. I would misread it as angry. And they'd be like, oh, way to take your shirt off. And then the guy's like... And then you read it the other way. It's like, wait to take your shirt off. You look like good, you know? Like, that's a bad example. No, but, but you know what? If your editors want to splice this in, um, Kay and uh, Keenan Peel do a bit where one guy's texting the other guy, and it's how all tone can get lost in text. Oh, yeah. One guy's texting it the friendliest, and then the other guy's receiving it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Cheers. It's great having you guys. We can allow you to join if you want. I got Mike Tyson's weed. Dear God. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Is it? I'll make yeah. a toast. Please. Dear God, please protect us from your followers. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, so going back to what you said about the crotches, or what 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 did you say again? Meat prints. Here, I'll show you. Meat Where's my prints. Okay. So why are you you're you're like so you go that you see it? Let's say when you see the the, the guy's pee pee, right? In in the pants? Yeah. Gray sweatpants season is what they call it. Um Maybe I shouldn't talk about this. No, no, no. No, here. my mom watches. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is this is my meat print from today. Okay. And so I do a promo read with that. Oh wow, nice dog. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you I very mean, much. I'm not just saying this, that's classic. the prettiest schlong I've ever seen. <laughs> what a I gotta schlong. start cooking. Hold on. Do, you, do can you get Sarah a lighter, please? Uh so I'm gonna make the tzatziki. I'm gonna make a cucumber salad. This is uh, this is our, our flaffle mixture. This is the breading for this tofu. We're gonna rinse, soak the oh tofu. Oh my God. And we're gonna make tofu nuggets. Nice. Um, Todd is inside going, mm, no, no, but no. you're gonna like it. It's the experience. Um, and you know what? Uh, it's I, the experience. <laughs> you. Look at you, Bert. Yeah, I, I love cooking. You know, I, yeah, I gotta be honest with you. smoke weed at 12.30. It's that's it's an excuse. I can't usually do it either, but when I'm doing like this show or like when I used to do Doug getting Doug with high, it was like an excuse in the middle of the day just to do whatever you want. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it I, I well I I it's, I find getting I'm inebriated for work totally a great it. excuse. Do you still not that doing what we do we can also sometimes have to adhere to a Friday Saturday schedule, but I don't know why I adhere to it in a big way. We're like, I'm like, well, let's do it Saturday because there's no, I mean, they go, Todd, why? Yeah. You don't have really to adhere to that schedule. But I feel relaxed, more relaxed on Friday and Saturday. Does that make, can you edit this out? <laughs> yeah, I don't follow it. I don't, I'm not interested. Oh, I, I Sarah, it's so good. I know you love I, me so much. I, I <laughs> Oh, God. What? How long have you guys been? sweaty face. How long have you guys oh, been it's friends? It's so dewy. Sorry. It's dewy. I know, I Does hate it. Does this feel it. good or is this gross? No, I like it. Oh. Do it as you touch my penis and I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> oh. <Do> you... <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. All right, this so is our tzatziki. Do so, so you want any gonna... of this? Yeah, probably. So we're making tofu you know. McNuggets. Or nuggets. No, we're making... I don't know. It's making a spin on chicken and waffles. It's making a spin on chicken and waffles. That's right. It's on chicken and waffles, okay, but we're using great. waffles as the waffles. And we're doing tofu as the chicken. It's gonna be fucking good. I yes. promise you. And you got the syrup. Did I tell you about the night 
because I just we just talked on your on on uh, your show, but uh, where I was home and I didn't have any pancakes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so I had that must have been so scary. I, <laughs> I happened to have uh, sea salt butter for whatever the reason. It was sea salt Ooh, butter. Nice. I put some on a spoon and then some <laughs> syrup on a tablespoon. And guess what? What? I don't think I ever need to have pancakes again. It did the job. It's all really? the syrup in the butter. Oh, yeah. Sy oh, oh, yeah. Right. The pancakes are the fattening part. I know they're both fattening, but I had to say that quick in case somebody thought I was serious. But pan uh, butter and syrup on a spoon, holy shit, it's pretty good. Butter and syrup on a spoon. You know, butter on toast. When I went keto, I've been doing oh, a yeah, lot of that just was probably, butter. Oh, yeah. Just butter. Butter. I can do just butter. On what? In butter. I can just take some butter. I can do that with sugar packets. Is that the same like yeah, this behavior? Yeah, 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 I can just open up sugar packets, and my friends are like, "What are you doing?" I go, "It's, it's oh, good." Oh, can I tell you a secret? When I'm when I'm partying hard, right, and I'm on one, I will take uh, I will take my hand because I, I, I want to drink, but I won't feel good, you know. So I'll take my hand and I'll lick it, and I'll pour a Kool Aid packet on my hand, and then I'll just go to it every now and then on the flight as a little treat. <laughs> Oh, Bert. That works for Bert. That's <laughs> yeah. I do it with salt. I do it with I do it with salt. And I do it with Kool-Aid packets. I, <laughs> I do it with LMNT. I just pour it on my hand, and then I just, every now and then I go, I know where it is. I can get to it if I need it. You know, usually, Bert, when somebody like, you know, not that you're burying your soul in some, you know, <laughs> deep way, but it's, it's you, you told something personal. I try yeah. to think of, there's got to be something I do like that, as you're telling me. I'm like, usually you can go, oh, I have this. But on that one, I'm still thinking. <laughs> I'm still trying to think like. I tuck socks under my pillow in case I'm cold at night. Really? Not no, a bit. So they're just there. No. What? Yeah. What? Um. I. Uh. I knew a girl. I kind of dated her, but I didn't really date her. But I knew a girl who used to put her pajamas under her pillow, and that's what. Oh, and then she told me. A lot of people do that, and I was like, and then I, my buddy started dating her friend, and I was like, yo, does she keep her pajamas under her pillow? And he's like, yeah, is that fucking weird to you? I was like, ah, maybe it's just them. But yeah, she kept her, and every time I think of, I, I such an interesting place to get, make your bed and then well, put your pajamas under the pillow for tonight. I do it with my gym clothes in the morning. If I don't have to get them while oh. my socks are there, my, I just have it all on the sofa. And also, I sleep on a made bed. Because I don't want to make my bed in the morning. Hold on. So I make, is that, Sarah, is that weird? Listen, I, let's not use the word weird. So you I don't, don't get under the covers? I get, well, I do, but it's, I, get, I have a blanket that I sleep on top of the made bed. Does that make sense? I know to you, you go, well, that's sleeping with a blanket. I promise to someone this makes sense, even if nobody in this room. So be careful the way you react to my but, story. But when you get up, you probably, Fold the blanket and straighten out the bed. Well, here's why things have changed a little, and I promise I'm not making this up. Recently, I found this thing. It's fitted blankets. So I don't think anyone, it would occur to any of us that you wrote this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not buying this. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> this guy's a fucking liar. Well, what sometimes, you wrote this. Sometimes that happens, Bert. People go, you know, they'll be like, Todd, you didn't do that. I go, I, trust me, come over to my yeah. house right now. So there are these things, and they're fitted blankets. You know when you go to a hotel, although I don't like when they do it, when they make the bed so tight, but I like the way it looks. So that's what this looks like, but it's a fitted blanket. It's like a sheet, but it has the texture. Now I use that. So that's on the really? bed. I sleep, and then I just fold the, uh, this story. I'll give you all I 50 sleep with, bucks. I sleep with uh, seven pillows. I love having pillows. I do too. My boyfriend makes fun of me. It's like I have three under me. I have one under my knees that also, like, when I turn to the side, is also under my knees. Are you still dating the same guy? Rory. Yeah. Can I tell you that name showed up late in my life? I never met same. a Rory. And then yeah. I met a couple, and I was like, okay, is that like a regional thing where it doesn't it seem like every Rory likes to read and he likes to wear a sweater and he likes to be comfortable and he's kind of woke, but he doesn't throw it in your face. Rory like, Scoville? Every fucking that. Rory I meet, Rory McElroy, all the Rory's are like white dudes or like just solid guys. It's almost like the opposite of Chad or Karen. <laughs> like he's a fucking Rory. Like, God, that guy's a fucking Rory. We should start that. Name some, name some great Rory's. 
You know what? And Rory also, Albanese. Oh, he's a good one. Rory Albanese, Rory Scoville, Rory. I love Rory Scoville. God, he's so fucking smart. I miss him so much since he died. Yeah. <laughs> He told me to never <laughs> stop doing that bit, by the way. <laughs> to never stop doing yeah. I go, Rory, is that weird at all? He goes, no, I know. Whenever I get text, sorry to hear about, or, you know, to, he goes, we, I know you were somewhere telling everybody I died. So if you, if you do die, people will know if he really dies. I'll say someone, it Someone actually tried to fake their death recently and got a lot of trouble for it. Oh, I'm glad. Let me hear the story, because I thought about this. I've thought about it a lot. I always want to see what people will say. I know. I but want to see what they wear. I want to see if they're sad, who cries, who doesn't cry. That's why I won't kill myself with some certainty because the reason, the fantasy of it is, uh, I will just see the way people react. But I, what I believe, I won't see that. So I'm not killing myself for no reason. I would love to go missing. Like, that would be cool. What? To go missing. Where? I don't know. At like, the mall? In, no. <laughs> There's no malls in anyway. Edit that out. I don't want people to think I'm old. <laughs> Nobody goes to the mall anymore. People go to the mall? I know, I'm just kidding. But there are, it will be it a is... thing of the past soon. <laughs> I'm Do serious. Because you know? I'm telling you, we're, hopefully we'll all live and you'll go, oh my, I remember Tom remember said the malls? that. Yeah, yeah, it's already like that. This episode is sponsored by DraftKings with the playoffs heating up. Now is the perfect time to get in on the action with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook right now. All new customers who bet just $5 on anything will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. So, sincerely, what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings app now. Sign up using my promo code BURNING. The crown is yours. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. It's a no-brainer. DraftKings has something for the returning customer as well. Score a no-sweat NBA bet. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot to win cash prizes. I'm telling you right now, this is making the NBA playoffs so much fun for me. I've never, I, I'm a casual NBA fan at best, but I am a heated NBA fan when I'm <laughs> placing a bet through, <laughs> through DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code my promo code BURNING and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BURNING only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. I remember when I first heard that we would get our groceries online. I remember mocking my friend Scott O'Brien so hard. I was like, okay, oh, let me get this. So I'll get on the computer and go, I need milk. And he was like, yeah, that's exactly how it's going to work. And now it, it is. That was my reaction to, for some reason, Women when it was, <laughs> when it was <laughs> made illegal to smoke in bars. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. It's not like I want to smoke at a bar, but I was like, oh, right. Oh, you know, like, that's going to work. That's re fucking crazy. Because in my mind, like, comedy clubs had to be smoky. Yeah. Right. Even but though we, we didn't like it, oh, still. Oh, so horrible. We're so against what we don't know. I, I tried to explain to my daughter, Georgia. It's not true, by the way. What? You have no idea. Has anyone ever sat in the smoking section on a plane? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't remember ashtrays, but I don't remember smoking. Uh, you could, there were, on the flights in 1995, on the flights, the transatlantic flights, they were still smoking. And I, not on American Airlines, I think, but on foreign airlines. Me and my buddy Weecho were like, yo, we should have some cigarettes. Like, we're gonna fucking drink and smoke. We should sit in the smoking section. The second you walked Onto the plane, you can smell it, but when you walked to the smoking section, you were like, oh, this is different than smoking. This is people that just <sighs> go into those little boxes they have at airports where people smoke. Oh just God. walk in there, and you'll be like, how the fuck can you still do this? That's okay. I promise I'll make this quick. But I <laughs> do you promise? I think this ties into a social point in a weird way that. Sometimes even behavior, when you're amidst it, you don't even realize how weird it is. Like reading magazines on the toilet. Like we did that. We, and no one said, oh, I'm not going to lick, but you did. See, so licking <laughs> shit and magazines and the shit. And people would sit on the toilet. We look back on that and go, that's gross. We look back on that and go, we just sat in the, and we didn't know it. We didn't yeah. sit in the midst of it. Maybe a small group of people did, and they were considered weird. Lunatics. Lunatics. And the rest of us went, you know, so now looking back on it, so the, the goal in life should be, 
to think of what other views you might have in the current, instead of waiting 20 years, do it in the now and go, what am I doing now that's equivalent to that? Oh. There's gonna be so much stuff that we don't, shockingly, still don't see as problematic <laughs> course, now, even course. in this world. I'll tell you what, the, yeah. big, the big thing for me, uh, and we, I was talking to my sister about this today and Stacy, but just how many gay kids there are. Like, it's over fucking whelming. So much that we're like, we're, is straight, like, no longer a thing? Like, uh, every kid I know, almost every kid I know is gay. And, like, ones where I go, I would never would have clocked that. And, it's, and so I, that's the big one for me is, like, yeah, I, I'm just blown away. That, and it's maybe not even just gay. Maybe just everyone's like, I don't care. Sure, I think maybe. it's like what Greece was or like in the, or the, not, I don't know, Roman times. That's Italy, I guess. I don't know. The olden days. Well, I was thinking of the movie. I'm I was not like, smart. what, Greasers? You know, they have and... a lot of blind spots. But they were very, sexuality was, yeah. wasn't heteronormative at all. I keep thinking of the movie Greece. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm like, wait, wait, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, what were she's you? talking about the, the Roman days. No, in Greece, when Kaniki, Caesar, <laughs> and Duty. When, when Caesar's is like, Brutus, I can't drive. We're the racing for pink. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell what I don't know. Oh, Todd's like, oh, I want to connect no. with this. Oh, no. <laughs> she's so right. I'm well, I do have this interesting story about what Birch is. Bert, I saw that. Get it, kill those up on the camera. I, yeah, I can't eat that. Um, Touch the bottom I, of a clean bowl. I did think of something you, were, but Bert was saying and tied it in, um, I don't know, probably like 10 years ago, I went with Sarah to Israel. Keep it down. Oh. No one needs to hear this. <laughs> Shh. First of all, mate, we don't have to get into this, but my no, no, let's sister talk about this. and her, and I have seven close family members that live there. So we booked a couple shows. The whole experience was absurd. And might I say, Sarah got some nice treatment, so it made everything easier. Um, you know, people were oh. very loving towards you. And you know, it, I, go, I wonder if people know me in Israel. And I was like, oh my God, they yeah. definitely do. <laughs> so we went out and. <laughs> ah, cause I've never really been there. I mean, I've only been there twice. You're like, like when Russell Peters goes to India. Mm -hmm. You're like, you're like, hello. Mm -hmm. And then you go, can I get a bagel? And they're like, no bagel! Of course you got the bagel! It's crazy how you do, like I told you this, but like, you're like a, you're like a, a icon for, for any Jewish woman in Hollywood who's like strived, everyone fucking loves you. Are you, for women in general. I'm so godless and such a bad Jew, but I am definitely, I feel I'm considered good for the Jews and I take that. I think you're good for people. Mankind. I think you're good for people. Mankind. The, uh, I'll keep saying. When did you guys, when did you guys meet? Oh, I'll never oh. forget it. <laughs> Um, well, I, we met before this, but I always say, like, the moment I fell in love with Todd was, it was, I think, Aspen, Aspen Festival. Yeah. <laughs> One night, we were going to Dave Rath's uh, hotel room to smoke weed, and we're all walking up there, following him, and I didn't know Todd well, and he kept going, Sarah, Sarah, I have to tell you something, I have to tell you something, and I'm like, what? And he goes, I, I just feel bad, and I go, what is it, Todd? And he goes, I stabbed a hooker in the eye in the lobby. <clears throat> in the alley or something. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's when I realized I loved him. <laughs> it was just so random and sincere sounding. Yeah, I look, you know, I did. I fell, in, I fell in love with Sarah right away, and I, I know why, because I'm, I like uh, all over the spectrum. I like people that can be just silly, and of course, of course, but then, you know, have a drop of the dime, have a serious conversation. I like the whole sort of gamut. So it's always fun to hang Talk out about with Donahue and Mr. Rogers. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Let me tell you something. Mr. Rogers, look, this is this is a good thing to do. Mrs. Rogers, I love that she said this. She said someone Ginny. some uh, thank you for that. Ginny. Ginny? Yeah, I don't know. Someone said there'll never never be another Mr. Rogers, will there? Now, oh. She could have said yes, and that would have been a beautiful answer too. But I get it, on one level there never will be. But she said what I prefer. She went. Yeah, there are. They're out there now. You have to look for them. And it was like so much of a better answer because it says they are out there. So look for Mr. Rogers in your life, you know? It was something his mother taught him like right. during, after some big tragedies. She's like, always look for the helpers. There's always people, when everyone's running away, there's always some people running toward. Yeah. Really? I'm, I'm dipping in here washing, right? 
Yeah, so look for the helpers. Uh, make one of them. Making a med, yeah. major yeah. impact. Yeah. Put put it in in a <laughs> just dip <laughs> this in. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, so you go. Yeah, I got you. Boom, boom, boom. And then Let's go back yeah, to you. our room. Sarah, <laughs> what did she just did say? Sarah goes, oh, this is making a major impact on birds. <laughs> No, the helpers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, the yeah no, I get it. People that help. It's I get nice. it. <laughs> oh, you know when people do that when you, you say you're not listening because they're on their phone and they think listening means just repeating one thing you said aggressively. Oh, you mean right. my wife? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah my so, wife. My so, wife. So I'll go like this. I'll be like, you, uh, come on, you're not listening. They go, yeah, the mall. You know, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, the mall's the thing of the past. It makes the same yeah, old right. my reference the mall. Yes. Yeah, I was hoping for engagement, and also I was hoping for our eye contact. Yeah, eye contact. Is eye contact too much to ask for? And also, God forbid, one of those people that's always on their phone, which can be me at times. Happens to be doing something for you, you will never hear the end of it. Goes, oh my God. If you go, come on, man, just just try to be off your phone tonight. They go, I'm looking up the pizza. Let's, wait, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's always on her phone, never has anything to do with me. This one time she happens to be doing something for me and acts like my concerns are not real. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on, Sarah, try to be off your phone. I was looking at your tour schedule. <laughs> you want, said you wanted to schedule a party. Do it again. Do it again. I don't know. I couldn't so think of anything. Yeah, that was great. That was great. That's actually so, that's my it, assistant, it, Pete. It doesn't have to be so excitable. You're right. It's anything. Oh, I was looking at the real. Okay, here we go. Oh, I don't want to be this person, but try to just be off your phone tonight a little. Uh. I was texting your mom, thanking her <laughs> for having you. But okay. Sir, do you know I could do this? Just give me one more, please. <laughs> I'm not a good at improvising. Yes, you are. I think you're better because it's so subtle. It's like you're just, and you're the breath. You can't believe. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on. Try to just be off your phone tonight, please. I was just buying you that thing from on Amazon. You were telling me you wanted it. This is not far off. That's why I love it. It's anything. It's no, like <laughs> Todd is such a good person. We went to see Uncle Frank, Jimmy's Uncle Frank in the hospital when he was he was sick and and um, How's, how's he doing? Is he better? Oh, he died many years ago around this time. <laughs> but um, um, no, no, I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking. Oh, of, Guillermo. Yeah, Guillermo. He's, dead. Like, he's yeah. dead too. Nice. <laughs> no, he's oh, alive. This is embarrassing. <laughs> and we drove together, and uh, he was driving his car, and I was like, Todd, no, oh, let me do it. And he, all right. And I go, and I backed up his car straight into a pole, crash. And I. Before I could even like say anything or like, he just went, it's okay, who cares? It's a dent, I'll get it fixed. It's okay, I got that from Nobody my Nobody cares. My and I appreciate team. you left out the part that as soon as she hit the pole, I went like this, I have this in the car, I went. <laughs> <laughs> just to celebrate the moment, you know what I mean? It's like if somebody goes, I'll bring it in the house and they trip and fall and they, you know, you go. <laughs> I keep it on me 24 hours a day. <laughs> Wait, let's talk. We were talking about jacking off earlier. Oh, right. I want to look at this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, so I say it, I never got caught. I never got caught. I got a clean record. Totally clean. Yeah, nor I. Well, as a chick, even if you get caught, I guess if your dad catches you, it's awkward. But like. Oh, God, thank you're God. You're like, that's just like a porn or like. <laughs> no, it's like, it isn't. <laughs> It really isn't like a porn. I mean, they, they make no. that porn. They actually make that porn. Isn't that crazy? Of There's a, no, no. A, a very, very, you don't watch, you don't watch enough porn. There, a big, 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 big uh, <laughs> genre is stepdad, stepdaughter, stepmom, stepson. Bert, I watch porn. Do you really? Yeah. Yes, everybody a, does. People either admit it or they don't admit it. I didn't watch a lot of it. Till I found it on Twitter, so I was like, like, you know, older. Really? Oh, life. it would show up on Twitter. Yeah, it's still there. My Instagram mentions have like, have this happened to you? Where you, like, you know how you can go to the one where someone's mentioned you? There's like sometimes like videos of not my kind of porn at all. Porn on in it. in like, Instagram. Can yes. I tell you? Can, can I tell? Oh, can I just? Can I start sending you clips of things that the women in my feed do that I'd like to see you make fun of? Yes. 
There's one I love so much. You know I'm going to say the roast beef sandwich. Have you seen the roast beef sandwich video? Well, no. Go on. It's, I it is, so, what hap- so what happens is one... Like one person will think of something creative, do it, and then what had happened is all those, all those influencers who don't really have a ton of creative ideas, they just mimic it. And the one they have is, it's a girl going on their phone. She's like, "Hey everybody, um, is it just me or do I love it?" And then she drops her phone in her vagina, and it's got panties on, but it's a quick thing and comes up a great roast beef sandwich. <laughs> and I wanted to do a copy of that so badly. I wanted to be, do a, like a hot dog video or something. You're not even really on Instagram, Sarah, are you? Yes, I am. You don't fully. post like crazy, though. I just post from. Oh, I'm, I'm too stoned. You got the thing. You got the thing that Chappelle has, in my opinion, where it's uh, there's a precious. You're like uh, diamonds, like like uh, you know how diamonds. So diamonds are actually all over the place, but then they and they have them. You can get them. If they sold them the way that as many they have, they'd be really inexpensive. But what they do is they control the diamond market so that we pay more for them. And the coolest thing about you and the way you've run your career is you're a little choosy on what you pick to do. You don't do everything. You don't show up everywhere. You talk when you feel like you have something to say. <laughs> and it's like, and there's a pre- you're like a diamond. There's a preciousness to how much you release of Sarah. I, on the other hand, am like yellow diamonds. I'm everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can get them anywhere. I'm like the cubic zirconia you, you of comedy. Do. I like oh. things that are special, like a diamond, that are um, accessible. I don't like when things are special because not everyone can have it, and that just by virtue of that. Yeah, but everyone so can have. So I like have... your kind of diamond. Oh well, thank you. I, I I would much rather be your diamond. But you're also not funny. What do you like? Mm. And I'm both. And none of us want to be Todd. Oh no, you didn't. Let me be. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I swear, I'm being honest. <laughs> truth. Yeah. Today I thought I'm trying to like. Re- can I re? Can I be different? Yeah. Even at this point in my life, can I? Maybe there's a quality I have. I could do. Maybe maybe try too hard. Maybe someone that didn't like you would go. I think Todd does tries too hard. And then I bring this. I thought about this this afternoon, and then I go, woo-wee, and I go, you know, if someone goes, Todd Glass tries too hard, let's say they're trying to give me a shot. They go, you know what? Maybe I'm too hard on Todd Glass. I always say he tries too hard. I'm going to watch him on this episode with Sarah. I love Sarah. And then I pull out the, ah, uh, they're like just, isn't that weird that that fantasy is in my head somewhere? Oh, yeah. Oh, I. That's I, not true, though. But I, I think people delight in your extra mile. I'll oh, meet I do, I do. I'll I meet in the middle. Definitely I'll meet in the middle. do. The, really Where'd the side. fucking whiskey go, Todd? Oh, it's here. Bird, it's um, on your head. It's. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like? Do you feel like? I feel like I look at the first hour I did comedy. I think I feel like comedy's changed a great deal. But I look at the first hour, and I go, Yeah, I'm, in, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed of the titles of the tracks. Oh, like, me, yes. <laughs> I was like, because it was a different business. You had to try to draw eyes so you're like black people, <laughs> Chinese people. And there was. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. Like, it was like, and it was, and it, like, it was crazy because uh, you want to get views. And now I look back and I go, and I've, I've talked about this a lot. I go, what was I trying to do? Because, like, I, it's not who I am. But when I got into comedy, of it's course. like everyone had a dead hooker joke. I didn't even know you could get hookers. I didn't think that was a real thing. Like, so, so like everyone had a dead hooker in a trunk. And so then I have a dead hooker in a trunk joke. And everyone's got like a being in a cab joke. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, okay. And then I'd get in a cab to write a fucking joke. And then it's not until you're a certain age where you go, I don't give a shit about a lot of the stuff I've been talking about. And I, I wonder like if you felt that because you got in so young. And, like, I remember, I mean, jokes, I don't even know if you tell now. I think you would. But, like, the joke about I was sucking jelly off my boyfriend's cock the other day, and I realized, I, I realized I'm oh turning. God, I'm turning into my mother. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't, I have not watched my first special in many, many, many years. You know, yeah. why would you watch your own special? But I know it's extremely problematic. I mean, there are things in it I really love, but it's, yeah. you know, all... Listen, forgive me for forgiving myself, but all we know is what we know up until any point. You know, I, that's all there is. But I feel like I've changed so much. and I, But I wonder, like, the people that affect change in my life is Leanne. And 
You've dated and some. And your daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- I, edit that out. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. They're not that. Oh, this Let's is see the how part this works you don't out. show in the documentary. Let's see how this works out. Close up on Bert. Leanne. Uh, yeah. Leanne, the, my girls really changed me. Uh, who, who, and like, who have is affected change in you where you go like, man, I'm so glad I met that person. One, I mean, so many people in my life, kind of like my sisters and stuff and Gary Shandling. God, Gary Shandling. Tell me about Gary Shandling. I never met him and I fucking love that guy. He just. Gary Shandling, He right? was really, well, his comedy is incredible, but like he just was really zen, but it was because he needed to be. You know, yeah. like that documentary, it's two parts that Judd Apatow made is, it, it's really a must see to like understand him. And there's, he has like diary entries, you know, that Judd found that are incredible because it's like, he was kind of like, he had to learn to get Zen cause he was riddled with all the things, jealousy and competitiveness and stuff. And he, he needed was peace. No, but he learned not to. And then he gave us those hard lessons, like on a silver platter. You know, that's generous. And we learned so much from him, so many of us. He was just really such a mentor too. And Judd showed me a a page from his diary that said, and there are things he's telling himself that he's, you know, that he's learning. And he said, give, give more than you got. Give what you didn't get. That's what it was. Oh, wow. I was like, ooh. I gotta start paying my features more. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I heard out of that. <laughs> oh, By the way, these flapple waffles, yeah. I don't know why no one's made flapple waffles in the past. These this are fucking. It smells so good. It smells so good. Smells what were you really gonna say? Good. What were you gonna say? Well, I didn't know Gary at all, uh, you know, but I saw him, it was like some clip on, I think, Paul Provenza's show, and I, I love something that he said. He was like, you know, comedy will change. They were talking, it'll change, it always changed. But one thing that sort of seems will stand the test of time was authenticity. Mm-hmm. Did I say that word? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, no matter how, it is authentic. It can yeah. be silly, it can be serious, it can be, it can be anything it fucking wants, but is, does it have authentic? And I always liked that he said that because it's a good meter for comedy to make sure you're doing a good job. Is this authentic and, you know? And um, and I'm sure he had like he had like so many of those. You know, you know like, it's I, I've, I've had jokes in my life. I want. I'm curious. I, I mean, where I didn't mean it for it to be a joke, and I said it on stage, and another comic was like, "That's really funny." Like I, I remember, I remember I had a joke about I didn't know that Helen Kellen, Helen Keller and Anne Frank were different people until like I was like 22. <laughs> Amazing. But I, but it was just my reality. It was my reality. Like, and it was a story that happened. It was silly. We had gone to Anne Frank's totally house. Totally conflating. Well, it's, 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 Anne, it. it's Anne Sullivan is why I thought they were oh, the same yeah. person. I figured Anne Frank and Helen Keller, oh, that's the lady that helped her. Water. By the way, I got. I made, I made so many jokes about Helen Keller in my life. Do you realize how terrifying her fucking life must have been? At 18 months old, she loses her sight and her fucking hearing. She goes, it goes dark. So she doesn't know how to communicate with anybody. I mean, it's like, actually, I feel really she horrible. She must think everybody's huge, because the last time she saw them, she was so little. <laughs> she walks around. Someone should tell her that. Uh, well, she's dead now. But if I was her friend, I'd go, uh, remember, can I tell you, you what? Bigger can I tell you what? Do you remember when, do you remember, edit this out if you need to edit this out, but do you remember when the conservative media attacked Janine Garofalo for vocalizing her opinions? Back in like, uh, of course. 97, 2001, yeah. right? They did that to Anne, to Anne Frank. No, uh, Helen Keller. They did that to Helen, not Anne Frank. They, well, they did it to Anne Frank too, but uh, they did it to Helen Keller. Helen Keller was very vocal about women's rights and uh, I think birth control. She and, was? Yes. Oh, Helen Keller's a fucking bad motherfucker. And you know what they did? They just destroyed her. They just destroyed her. And that's how we got Helen Keller jokes. Oh wow. my God. It, we grew up with all Helen Keller all right, some jokes. Of your... People at work here seem to have a look on their face. They're not sure if this is true. Well, I bet a lot of people have never heard of Helen Keller. Well, oh. ha- no, I think most. Uh, you might be right. Yeah, they have. But Bert, when you say that, Everyone I realize does know Helen Keller. here's this Even amazing kids, woman, but... and all we knew of her were Helen Keller jokes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah and, the, and by the way, God it's because does. she was a vocal Excuse fucking me. woman. Yeah. Vocal, the, I mean. No, not vocal, but. Yeah, wrong she was. Words. She was like, I almost didn't. I almost fucking did a Helen Keller impression. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bert that, does something to me. He does. Isn't it crazy that... Uh, it's in his eyes. Isn't it crazy that um, 
that, that they, they destroyed her. And so we all made jokes about Helen Keller our whole lives, not realizing what a pivotal Fuck person. Her. Yeah. <laughs> you never see anything about Helen Keller the later years. Yeah, they just <laughs> like like a road trip movie. Like, like it ends when she <laughs> learns to talk. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe a documentary is due. Get that on it, Bert. Bert, get your people. I, I know she grew up in Alabama. Oh really? Probably. Probably. Pretty... <laughs> Wait a second. This seems a no. Little she did grow up in Alabama, right? She grew up in Alabama. Her, I, I'm sure, I'm certain she was, dis, she had slaves. I'm certain. Like, <laughs> sir, what if you said that? I had to be a problematic family because they had money. What so, if, the killers. What if, what if you, go, you said probably. What if you were like being interrogated by like the police and they go, no, I was home by eight o'clock, probably. <laughs> That's not the answer anybody wants. Probably. I want to see, do you want to, wouldn't it be cool if you go in and see if they could get you to lie under oath? when they bring you into the interrogation room and see if they get you to go, you were there, you murdered her. And you're like, no, I didn't. And But then they do all the shit they say they do to people to see if it really works. I think you have to be up to oh, something. Oh, like interrogation tactics. Yeah, yeah but, and they go, and like the, the, the New York Five, right? The kids that they got them all to confess, but none of them really did it. Yeah. And then I would like to go in and be interrogated to see if it, that really happened. Because I, I go, why would you ever admit to something you didn't do? But it, clearly it happens. I mean, but I can relate to, and I bet you guys can. Like, I remember being like in fifth grade or something. Someone stole, you know, Mrs. What's Her Faces, whatever the fuck. And then she says, I'm going to turn the lights out. And whoever did it, put it on the desk, won't say anything. And I would be. All of a sudden she goes, it's you, Johnny. <laughs> No, but like I would get, I didn't do it, but I would get that feeling like, did I do it? Uh, you know? Sarah, if there's one thing I connect with a statement more in my entire life, it's that what you just said. Yeah. If Leanne found a pair of jeans in my bag one time, and I, I don't know how they got there, it was women's jeans, it was a, like a cute size, she was like, she was like, whose are these? And immediately I said to myself, I cheated on her. And I didn't, and I didn't, and I didn't. And I started believing I I that I cheated this. on her. And I started feeling really guilty about my behavior. And then I started behaving guilty. Yeah. And then when she when when she found out that it was her friend's Julie's jeans and they had just gotten under my jacket, I said to her, I knew I didn't cheat on you. Like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Like, that's like crazy. The day the machine story went viral, and there's a swear to God. Uh, I don't. I don't really tell anyone this, but there was a lady who commented, and she, her comment. This is the reason it went viral. It viral it said, uh, "I was in Birch Russian class. I was on this trip. This story is 100% true. He fucking robbed us. Do you know what I did? I screen grabbed it, and I sent it to Tom, and I said, I, I told you I wasn't lying.' And Tom goes, "I never thought you were lying. I said I thought I was lying. Yeah. I thought I was lying. <laughs> Isn't that fucking crazy? Wow." I probably pretty turn powerful. over and say I did it pretty quick, guys. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be like, I did it. I, I killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm getting ready to plate this, guys. Here, pass me your plates. Oh, I'll, I'm I'll so make excited. Yeah. When I started podcasting, an online store was the furthest thing from my mind. Now I'm selling shirts, hoodies, koozies, cups, posters, and it's so easy because I use Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the Launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage to the all the way to the did we just hit a million dollars in order stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all in one e commerce platform to their in person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling. Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklyn, and millions of other entrepreneurs every size from across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify extensive help resource are there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. We use Shopify for all our merch. And 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 we have a link, I think, on our YouTube right there. That's where you see it. Shopify has grown our business 
extensively. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash burning all lowercase. Go to Shopify.com slash burning now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash burning. Can I get rid of this? Yes, please. Is, is this, what, what is it? Um, I don't know. Wow. Are uh, those, what type these. of waffles are these? These are Flawful waffles. Wait a second. Did you invent this? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. You did? I did, kind of. Look at Um, this. This is crazy. This, by the way, is what I'm most excited for because I snuck a piece of the cheese, and I think it was the vegan cheese, and it was better than the real cheese. Really? Vegan feta? Vegan feta was, like, slippery. It was, like, kind of, like, oh. Can I tell you something I just remembered? Put When I was little, I was left alone a lot. With that and the waffle. You can, you oh, I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. We moved into this house and it had a lot of wood. I feel like you can relate to this. In the bathroom had a wood frame. And I discovered that if I took my mom's giant thing of Vaseline, I like coated the whole door frame because it made it so shiny. And I coated the whole of our bathroom door frame with Vaseline. Because I just love what it looked like. <laughs> and then That's just so too great. I didn't, it felt so private i didn't think anyone would notice and but they did i guess and then my dad called a family meeting and we're all sitting on their bed in their bedroom and he's like trying not to laugh and he's like um somebody coated the door frame with vaseline um does anyone want to this is interesting this is coming up with what we were just talking about but does anyone want to say if they did it and i in my mind i was like no, no, no. I, I acted like, whoa, that does, because in my mind I go, that does sound weird, you know? But, you know, I never admitted it, but they definitely knew. Oh, God. You know, like that it was like the five year old. Oh, my God. Sarah. Oh my God, I'm laughing because of how fucking much I relate to I that. knew you would. So, oh, of course I did. That whole thing of, I used to be embarrassed to vacuum. When I was like in sixth grade, I wanted to vacuum the room because it was shag carpeting. You would always see, fo- I hated it. God, I love you know? that you hated it. I hated it. it I loved when Berber, life. When Berber carpeting <laughs> came along, I was so glad that my when parents, what? Berber, that's the no footprints carpeting. It changed my life. And um, so anyway, I'm in this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you realize that'll never make it to his shirt? <laughs> Berber carpeting changed my life. And I think it gave a lot of people sanity. People that need unity because there's already chaos in their house. Having that one rug all the way up the stairs, everywhere in the house, no footprints. It, it, for people that have chaos in their head, that probably is true no, and yeah. more, more relatable than maybe I even you think. You need order. Have you ever yeah. heard, I'm, I'm taking a left turn here. Have you ever heard Todd do his impression of uh, do his impression of Rodney Dangerfield doing Mitch Hedberg jokes because no. it's really something. No, okay. I, you know what? The, I only always know three or four of his jokes. Like as long as I as long Mitch as Hedberg's. I, yeah, like I, I, the three that come to me because I can take any of his jokes and just give him that Rodney Dangerfield you know thing. But he, yeah, they're like, I'll tell you the other day, a guy asked me if I wanted a frozen banana. You know, I said no, I want a regular one later. So all right, you know, what are you gonna do? You know? <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you, I used to do drugs, right? You know, I still do, but I used to, too, all right? You know? Do the, right. the rice. I'll tell you, I like rice, you know? Rice is good. It's good if you're hungry and you want 2,000 or something. Oh, wait, <laughs> all right. I'm pouring this on. Wow. This is the vinaigrette. Look how gorgeous that looks. Look what you plated. We're talking, plating's everything Made to it me. Made and plated. Made it and played it. All right, I'm going for a perfect bite. Wow. This is what you need to produce next. What's up? As your, your, um, I don't know what the fuck I was going to say. Todd Glass needs like an HGTV show where he can make your, you know, this this 23-year-old's or 29-year-old's apartment fucking killer for $100. I would fucking love He's that. He's so good at it. It's crazy. You know what, and I, my friend goes, you should do it yourself. You should just do it yourself, post on Instagram. Cause I always have ideas like that. I go, but I'm just too lazy. You know, mm-hmm. I'm too lazy to do I'll it myself. It. I'll make it. Well, how about this? But is that guaranteed? Hold on, what if I had paperwork right here with so manipulative? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. I don't even wait till later. 
All right, I'm done. Bert, this is so good. I love mm. the tofu. Mm. Bert, mm. wow, this is a falafel and a waffle. You know what? You would think that this is an infomercial because <laughs> you know what I mean. If you just put like old fashioned mm. during while I said that, it seems so. Fa it's a falafel. That's and something a waffle. I'd love to do. Is I would love to do QVC. I would love to do QVC. By the way, can you'd I be tell you, great at that. I would love it, Bert. I would love to do QVC if it was something I liked. Oh, buddy. I could go off for eight hours. Yep, right. It's my dream, actually. QVC the whistle. QVC, well, hold on. There is some truth to this. Um, oh that, God, so good. Please tell me you're selling those whistles on your okay, website. No, I don't, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is, this is a bit from my act. But I did bring it today thinking it's appropriate. I know you're excitable and silly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you'll appreciate this. So I just want to keep the record in case anyone goes, I saw him do this. But I mean this. Like, if I did this, if I was QVC, I could mean it. I go, look, here's, here would be my cell. Okay. Listen, people. I know there's a lot of people with kids out there, and you have to protect your kids. I think at the end of the day, any family, protect yourself, protect your kids. High-tech alarms, yeah, they work. They scare away people. But let's be honest. If every one of your kids had a different one of these handheld instruments, and God forbid, God forbid, think of what happens when the front door busts open. People live this reality. And if you hear an alarm go off, that deters people. There's no doubt about it. I'm not here to tell you it doesn't. But let me tell you something. When you have this plan implemented, and God forbid that day happens, nobody ever think it's going to happen. Boom, your front door, it's kicked open, and you're upstairs with your family. And from every room, they hear, <laughs> Not as a bit in real life. In real life. There's no fucking way they're going up the stairs. No, there's no there's fucking no way. There's no way they're going, even with this, they're not going upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going, oh shit, I need a TV in this house so bad that I'm going to run towards some siren sound. I don't know what's going on at this house. Some and a sociopath. <laughs> This might be better than this now that I think about it. Just some sicko in the room with a gun going, <laughs> like you're a duck, he's a duck call. Come on up here, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Sarah, how you you know all the comics that we are in love with, you're all your close friends. Like you're close friends with Letterman, close friends with Gary Shandling. I mean, I'm not close with Letterman like I was with Gary, but I... Like how often would you talk to Gary Shandling? Once a week. That's, that's a lot. I don't talk to my daughters that much. <laughs> I talked to my daughter for 30 minutes last night. She's jazzed that you're here. Mm -hmm. She's what? Jazzed. Ja my oh, my really? daughter's taken. Where are they? I don't see them. I, did I just walk They're in? They're invisible. You know his kids remind me of? Jiminy Glick's kids. No one's seeing them. Oh, Matthew Modine. You ever cut through Jiminy Click? Click right now. Your staff. Yeah. So I don't look crazy. They go, oh, here's Modine, my my children. No one's seen these kids. Bert. One of his kids is named Modine. And in, in, in in Jiminy his, Glick, when he yeah. fake makes up his family, because yeah. I presume he's probably gay. Was Jiminy Glick? Jiminy Glick was Martin Short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That character. You you know that character, right? Yes. Wait. Let's talk about Steve Martin. Let's talk about Steve Martin. So. We all watch the documentary. I'll join him when I'm done eating. I, I, I can. Is there a part of you that feels like Steve Martin and Todd Glass would be best fucking friends? Yeah. They have the same fucking brain. I have a cease and desist order. That's so interesting. <laughs> That's my only takeaway. Was he does stand up the way Todd does stand up, where Todd th thinks about it. He's thoughtful about it, and and like the idea that he would have everyone go out and get milk and cookies. And I was like, Todd does that. Like, that's Todd. That's like the show you're doing now. What? Wow, that's Come a good... On. You know, Friendship. we talked about it. I didn't want to out-talk it, but I'll... You know, the uh, there is a crowdsource over at um, Seed and Spark, everybody. Yeah. You know? mm. So, for a show that, like, yeah, like putting a lot of into the production of so it. so fun. You know what I thought was well, the one thing I connected me with you and him was that he had a great... He has a great sense of design like yeah. his house is gorgeous his house is so cool that part of me goes i wonder if he is the guy that can't like leave a glass in the sink mm. he reeks of it a little bit like he looks very put together 
You know, I would be, I could, I could never live in that house. I think it would be like, I would never feel nowhere to sit. I could leave a glass in a sink, by the way. Not to say, you know. Let's I'm start a, doing that. I don't want to fucking lose my shit. No. I can use, but not too many. <laughs> but in your book, you said growing up, if there was like a dirty dish in the sink, it could ruin your day, didn't you? Oh, I, and you know what's harder than that? Having to hide. I'll clean it up. I'm not even going to complain. Yeah. I'm in eighth grade. I'm not going to go, why isn't anybody cleaning their dishes? No, just let me do it. Yeah. But I would have to do it in secret if, like, I'd knock over a plant, and then when the, I go, oh, the dog knocked over the plant, and then I'd vacuum the whole house. Meanwhile, pe everyone knew probably behind my back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I swear to God. Wait, you'd knock over a plant and be like, I would, oh, the goddamn dog. I'll be vacuuming the whole house. Bert, not the whole house, but as far away from the site as I could act like it was, still was caused by the dirt. You know, like, I knew I could sneak over four, five, six feet away. You know what I mean? But no, uh, but but that's what I would do because I didn't want to, you know, just uh, start vacuuming. I was embarrassed that I wanted to vacuum. And I couldn't oh. take it. Life, let me tell you something, it was hard. I wanted to order so bad. Really? All the time. I still can't believe as an adult that I could go away. I mean, this is a positive thing in life. I can go away for six, seven, eight. I can go away for six months, which I don't. But when I get back to my place, I still can't believe it. That's exactly how I left it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. I love that I can do this. I thought my whole life was gonna be just constantly trying to get order, you know? I get into my tour bus and I'm constantly going, oh shit, I left that here. Like, I have, I'm, I'm, the whole time I'm buying stuff, I was like, oh, I was fucking looking for this. <laughs> oh, That's love... why you sleep on a made bed. That's why I sleep on a made bed. Okay, so let's, let's Quality talk. of life. Let's talk sleeping then. I, I could, I, do not want my bed made in the morning. I want to leave it messy so it's ready for me when I get there. I can't have sheets tucked in. I need a lot of blankets and I need an ice cold room. Ice cold room. And I, I go to sleep really easy. I listen to podcasts. I listen to anything about Oliver Cromwell. Anything about fucking Oliver Cromwell. That fucking guy's life puts me to sleep so goddamn quick. Who is that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I could only tell you about 15 minutes of his life, so I'm sound asleep 15 <laughs> minutes in. He was born in the 1600s. Cromo was not his original name. He is the guy, he created, he was. He did the first revolution of, against Britain. They killed King James, or Charles. They killed King Charles, but he created, yeah, light another joint. They, he created, he created the first revolution and beheaded the, the king and... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm so bored. What? <laughs> That is like aggressively. But what do you listen to? Music. I got to tell you something before I forget. You said something that I never understood. I never understood it. And I've made it a ritual in my life. And I think about you almost every fucking night. But you used to say you like to get off stage and do like a bong hit and you were good. And that's how you run down your night. Mm. And I never got it. I couldn't understand it. And then I started smoking weed. And my ritual, when I get off stage, I hit a vape pen, and I'm done. And I maybe hit it one more time before I go to bed, and I listen to documentaries or whatever. But it's like, I think about it all the time, because you used to say you did that. I think you were doing that the night you had your heart attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Sarah's fault. Basically. No. He was having a massive heart attack, soaking, drenched, lying on the stage. The audience is gone. We're sitting around him, and I'm like... You guys, he's fine. He got high. I've seen him do this before when he's and also, high. I mean, I would have, I could have killed him if it wasn't for Jeff Ross, who was like, call an ambulance. The worst thing that happens is he's fine. I you know? was glad. The worst thing that happens is you he's fine. Mean, like, you know what? To defend Sarah, I was happy that Sarah was there because I remember specifically thinking this. I do not need an ambulance. But then anyway, the ambulance came. So when he goes, literally when he goes, God. you're having a heart attack, I swear to God, my, I went, <laughs> I go, he goes, sir, you're having a heart attack. Once they got me in the ambulance, I go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, meaning like, what? Like, they, what, yeah. you know? Because I couldn't this believe it. This is a heart attack. This is a heart shut attack? Shut the fuck up. I'm like, I'm here, I'm aware, oh, I'm having a heart up. attack. Oh, shut up, And it was these. like nausea more Did than your armor? Right? Did your armor? I, no, but I couldn't get a deep breath. I, I, but I didn't realize it at the time. But I, but I remember thinking like, this is a heart attack? Like, you know, I'm aware, hello, hi, I'm having a heart attack. I could literally yeah. say that if I wanted to. Um, but, but anyway, um, uh, did they read your last rites? No, but I did pass by, uh, upstairs. They got me to the hospital, which was very quick in an ambulance, which I remember thinking literally 
how like I, uh, being aware of the siren and like like whoa look it's yeah. me in here like you know it's like this but is but also fun. we were at Largo and you, they yeah. took you to Cedars like Largo it's they like took me to Cedars eight oh, seconds I, away you it was could have walked yeah. it was so close and it was like very anticlimactic. Um, <laughs> You're like, take a lap. Right. When I knew Come it was on. that close. Can I you drive by the improv real quick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Oh, God. Bert, can you just drive by the improv? <laughs> so uh, what they do wheel me by Sarah and Flanagan basically on the way to the operating room. And I stopped there and I thought, I want to say something funny. Like, I remember thinking, I want to, and Sarah top, topped it, which is what great comedy is. So I go, Sarah, like, I, I, I really thought, you don't have a lot of time, like, but I remember coming up to them and thinking, say something, say something funny. Yeah. I go, Sarah, your boyfriend cheats on you. Oh, no, they were <laughs> running. He was on a gurney, and they were running him into surgery, and I'm running behind, and he goes, Sarah, and I go, tied him right here, and he goes, I just want you to know if anything happens, Alec is cheating on you. <laughs> my boyfriend at the time. Right. And then she goes, Todd, if you live, this is going to be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so I thought everything was fine. I yeah. thought everyone knew everything was fine. It wasn't until later Sarah goes, no, you're, we thought this could be by for good. I go, well, you put on a good game face because I thought it was like, look at us doing bits. <laughs> They're going to yeah. put a skin in. <laughs> Woo, be right out. You know. <laughs> They're going to put a skin in. Yeah, a it's stint. like all taken for granted. A stint, a stint. What are you going to do? It doesn't talk? matter. We'll be back There's right after more. this with... The rest we'll, we'll be back r right after this, where I'm going to take Todd's seat, and he's going to take over the show. Oh, I love and he's going to cook her. I, well, yeah, but the whole time I got, I just got a little too high, oh. and I went, and I, and I said, I want to be on that side. <laughs> and yes, I was like, I bet, and, and this is Todd's uh, audition reel for Cook Food Network. Is there a toaster? This episode is brought to you by Talkspace. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and Talkspace, the leading virtual therapy provider, is encouraging people to talk it out in therapy. Opening up to a therapist might feel uncomfortable, cathartic, exhausting, exhilarating, but one thing's for certain, if you keep talking or texting with a licensed therapist, you'll gain insights and uncover truths that you can only find in therapy. Get those personal breakthroughs and judgment-free support by signing up for Talkspace. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within just 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home. There's no need to commute to appointments. It is the only way I do it is I will never see a therapist face-to-face -face again for the rest of my life. And I did face-to-face -face therapy for a while and I hated it. I hated being in traffic, finding a parking space. Did I get validated? Son of a bitch. No, it added so much stress to me and now I just do it from the comfort of my home. Look, to celebrate May, Mental Health Awareness Month, and the power of talking it out in therapy, Talkspace is offering every listener of this podcast $80 off your first month with promo code SPACE80 when you go to Talkspace.com slash burning. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash burning to get $80 off your first month with code SPACE80 and obviously to show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash burning code SPACE80. All right, here we go. So I was at the store today, right? And they have, of course, cinnamon toast, right? Cinnamon. Uh, I love cinnamon right? toast. But I saw they have, uh, what's banana the other one bread. called? Banana bread, which I never saw. But whatever Pop-Tart you like. I love cinnamon, all Pop-Tarts. Cinnamon maple syrup, is that what it is? Right, right, that's what that is. Brown sugar is, cinnamon. Exactly, you can't beat that. Yeah. But if somebody says, you ever tell somebody an idea, they go, oh, I don't like cinnamon sugar, and I get aggressive, I don't know why, but I'll be like, well, then use strawberry. <laughs> Jesus, you know, like that. It's not the concept here. Whatever pop tart you like, now I'm angry. Yeah, now you I'm understand the idea. Whatever of pop tart you. you like, I could give a shit. Yeah. And whatever vanilla, whatever flavor ice cream, I have vanilla. But whatever your favorite is, stick it in your favorite pop tart, okay? And don't, call me tomorrow. Okay, That's so here we go. a great cooking segment where you're just the guy who's fucking pissed <laughs> so, at the audience. Pissed. You well, never make the meal. You just spiral out. Okay. You're like, I'm done. I'm fucking done. But I still leads me to the same question. And I know I've talked about it on your show because I hope it manifests in the getting done. I want an answer. Yeah. Somebody from Pop-Tart, why have you, have you thought about it? I just want the answer. I don't even care if they do it. Yeah. Double stuffed, double iced, one in a package. Um, then you go to Thins. Then oh, thins. I would then love Pop-Tart thins. thins. Oh, Pop-Tart Thins? 
You're... I'm sorry, Todd. But sorry, I didn't that's mean a to great interrupt. idea. Give people the extreme, you know, Pop-tart give them all thins. the way this way, all the way that way. Pop tart thins. Yeah. <laughs> How good would a pop tart, double ice, double stuffed? Picture it. I don't think I'd get, I think you they'd what? probably cut into their, well, I'd never buy a regular pop tart again. Right. I just always get double stuffed. Ex- well, I'm not insulting the old pop tart. I don't want to get into that business. We're not saying don't have the old pop tart. Yeah. It's not an argument. We're just saying, would there be enough people? Yeah. This is the question. I don't want people to go, I wouldn't buy them. Okay, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Would there be enough people that would buy them that it would be successful? I can't believe the answer is no. I can't believe it. I want the answer. I, I, I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night thinking about how remedial the fork is. Like, that we haven't changed from this. <gasps> like, it, it, it goes back to just, and we never thought... Let's put a like. Let's like maybe make a, a top where you can grip it. You know, so when you're eating salad, it's like a monkey fist fork where you grab it and then it releases it in your mouth. A so grabber. you're fisting food. Yeah, like grabbers. Like why haven't we elevated the fork? Bert, you know what else is like that? What? If you think about it, the mop. Like okay, we go. There's this mop. There's that mop. At the end of the day, there's still mops. If you're up in space and something spills space. Like, yeah. nothing is more futuristic than that. And then they go, oh, I spilled something. Get the mop. Oh, they, 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 they have it. It's, it's not what I said true. They probably just, like... <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Nothing spills in space. Yeah, there well, they get the mop on the ceiling. On the ceiling. Wait, wait. <laughs> I have a beautiful visual of the guy who gets the mop and he comes out with the bucket and the water's everywhere. He goes, I don't think it's working the way we thought it was going to work. It's like the people that think the moon landing is fake and then they <laughs> someone's behind them mopping. Yeah. <laughs> Todd is behind them mopping. so much better on Earth. It was covered in water. I can't keep it in the bucket. <laughs> he just puts some soap in. I could change that bit around and still do it. <laughs> I'm going to fix that one up. I'm not getting rid of a gem like that. But I do have to fix some details, I guess. Todd, how, was... how are the pop-tarts? They're not going to... The other... Um... Two of these are in. This is in, great. That, if, if it was only yeah. this, it would be great. I don't want to keep us here. I'm always afraid I'm keeping people well here. Well done. I'd be like a horrible massage therapist. I'd be like, oh, I'm almost done. Don't worry. <laughs> like, no, we're, we're enjoying this. No, nah, but one more sec. Uh, ten I'll more minutes. I'll get out of your hair. I'll get out of here. Okay, and we're, where are the ice creams? Oh, the ice creams are here, right? Uh, uh, wow. Can oh, Todd shit. and I sleep over? Uh, do you want to do a sleepover? I would love a sleepover. Okay, so here's what I did. So I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna wash my hands. Or don't. Well, I, I normally I, I, clean. I can cheat, but you know I've been, to be honest, I was, uh, I don't know, I got nothing. <laughs> Edit that out. You're never and gonna regret washing your hands. You're never gonna regret washing your hands. Okay, try to stand over this way. That's what I put on my uh, tombstone. I'm <laughs> so mad I washed my hands. I'm so mad I washed my hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this, no, your tombstone says, and one time I didn't wash my hands. And they're like, and that's what Okay, I so okay. here we go. Oh. I got it, I got it, I got it. Hold on. Here we go. Here oh, we go. they fit what? perfectly. Yeah, they do. And then it, the thing is, you just have to eat it right away nice. and eat it with caution. And by the way, you can have one bite. I will not. Be offended. Yeah, sure, cut to me crying in the oh. corner. Bert, I go, oh, Bert, don't worry about it. No, oh, you take like a half tart. a bite and then I. It's uh, a warm Pop Tart. I'm biting into it right now. What's that? This is cinnamon. That's a banana. Uh, I, like, I want cinnamon. Good, good, good. That's perfect. You know why? Todd, did you want cinnamon? No, I wanted that. Do you um, swear to God? I swear to God. I swear on my mom. May she come back to life yeah, and die again. <laughs> May she come back to the life and die again. You know what I miss? I was thinking the other day. When my mom was just dead. That's the only amount I want. Okay, cool. Thank like you. Like, when somebody's just dead, you get all this love and attention. So you, I miss, oh, I miss when my mom was just dead. You know? Yeah. Because you think everyone, oh, now they think, oh, you're fine. She died two years ago. What are you still? No one says, is everything? Right. And then, so what I was thinking was, um, this is, I thought she was going to be just fine. dead forever. And then you miss it. <laughs> I don't know what my point is. All right, so I guess this, here we go. This is phenomenal. Yeah, I don't want you. I'm gonna this be is honest. This fucking phenomenal. Have I got it in my head? This is good, or bro, oh, buddy, the smoothness. I really kind of want you to try. Oh, you're trying mine. Oh, and it's warm. Mmm. Mm. It's got a good undercarriage. Fuck. Mmm. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I'm loving it. 
I could do another one. Right. I Holy thought about something. Holy fucking shit. So Here, here's the way somebody, yeah. a friend, would trick another friend into like making him buy into a company. So I feed you this thing, <laughs> and I, you go, oh, God, it's so good. Meanwhile, I play up you. I go, no, Bert, is it really good? Yeah. Do you really like it? I'd like to give you the opportunity, Bert. I wanted you to buy into this company. I made these. Look at this. I have like drawings of all the different packages. You're yeah. like, well, I said said it was great, but I don't want to like buy into the company. <laughs> it's so funny. We're taking investors. Yes, we're taking them. Bert, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm sure you'll come aboard. Anyway, if you could start a liquor, that if you could start a liquor or a, 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 a booze brand, what would you start? A w which type like of a booze? booze brand? Anything booze wise? What would you create? I feel like you'd be a rosé you know, or something, something. Excuse me? No, what'd you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's an old scare like, tactic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, very, just say anything to me. Well, anyway. No, I do like that jacket. It's what? <laughs> no, no, what about I my jacket? I, I like your jacket. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what I would Give me one more, I'll try. Okay. But anyway, you know, we're all having a good time. Are we done with the ice cream? Am I done with this? No, I, <laughs> shit, I fucked it up. That's why I don't act. It oh, was the scary. Third, it was scary. The third one was so bad. It's hard. I don't want to act ever. It's too nerve wracking. Oh, good. I knew you knew. <laughs> that's, not, that's his joke. I don't mind joke. using it on me. Whenever anybody does a woe is me thing, like if so, if somebody says, oh, you guys go out without me, I'll just, I'm boring. I'll ruin the whole yeah. night. Go, ah, we thought you didn't know. Oh, uh, I knew you knew, you know? I, I'm glad we connected on meat prints today. What is that? Meat prints. No, I'm, I'm a little high, so I don't remember. <laughs> take the, right now, with me, take the limitless pill. Access all of your brain. Okay, we talked when about... When first got here, and he was sitting here, and you were sitting there, and remember he said meat prints? He's been into meat prints. You were... You were like, oh, I look at those too. What would you imagine <laughs> well, meat trying, prints means? This is, this is a great promo for this. the episode. Can I tell you? I you thought this I'll, I'll give you this. Ready? Tell me if this thing... Meat prints. You did that. Oh, in that on the crotch. <laughs> there we go. Bing, 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 bing. He won twenty thousand dollars. It's another episode of Can the High Person Remember What They Were Talking it About? It should be a game show. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is good because you really do forget completely, entirely. Oh, it's embarrassing. Yeah, but it comes back. You it just comes have back. to. It's in there. Well, you were helpful. Thanks. No Thank watch, you. huh? Hmm. Fishy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think it looks I I don't I, I no don't, I just thought I, you, I just you, wondered it's on if you, the phone I know I just wondered also I can tell from the sun the direction <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if it's day or night right now that's that's the fun of it because as soon as now I think about it, it's probably day but it's fun everybody to when I say three everyone says if you think it's day or night okay <laughs> oh it's definitely day. Wait, do you count? Yet? We got here at 12. One, two, three. Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to think it's 8 o'clock at night. That means we've been here for 8 hours. Wait, hold on. My, my special skill set is I, if I open my eyes, I can tell you within five minutes what time it is. I can do that every I'm sorry. It's oh. unique. <laughs> Oh my god, that timing, so perfect. It's like, oh, why tell him? You know. <laughs> Wait, everyone can do By the way, I know Bert, to be honest, <laughs> no, I didn't think I was part of an elite sure. group, but I didn't realize that everybody could. <laughs> like until this experience, I thought, no, I think I'm like probably on the better side of doing that. I have it happen a lot. No big deal. I don't know who to brag to. Then I you're like, I'm was, good at that. I'm I good. do it all the time where I go. Come on, big guy. Yeah. I go, boom, kill it. I, do, I always play that game. I never look at the time without guessing it first. Well, I guess it all the time. Let's do it right now. What is okay? it? Oh, God, because I truly have no idea. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 125. Really? Are you looking at it? If I was telling yeah, you. Yeah, I'm cheating. I'm cheating. No, that's, that's more oh, about I do me. have a watch, but I didn't look at my watch. One. <laughs> 36. Well, I was, I was really off. No, it's two, uh, I'm going to say. Did you look? No, I just looked at my watch. 2.15. Yeah, yeah. 2.15? What time is it? 2.15. 2.13. God, I was really off. Whoa, Todd. I'm just saying. 
You, you should work at you a fair. You have Bert's unique talent. Yeah, I know. What? You should work at a fair. I, where, you, I could set up a booth at a fair. And just have a clock behind them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you guys told what time it is. The guy goes, it's one o'clock. No, no, let, let me do it. Slow down. Stop walking. Hey, you find him. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. I just heard him. It's one o'clock. You're like, stop talking to me. It's just, stop talking. You know what time it is. That's not amazing. Yeah. Let me guess. Let me guess. <laughs> Oh, I like how my, even in my fantasy thing that's going to happen, it doesn't end well. People yelling out, 3.30, I know, you have a watch, asshole. Please line up. There's no one in line. <laughs> I'm going to be with you in 15 minutes. I got a big line. <laughs> but like the next person in line, you know what time it is. <laughs> the next person in line, you're like, 3.15 still? It's no longer a trick. <laughs> What, what did he say? <laughs> oh. Most of it's in his... That's too good. Chat. I love when you have something in your head and you're telling yourself jokes and you can't explain them. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Oh, my God. Oh. For oh. what is a man? <laughs> what has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the thing. Bert truly feels, and not the words of what he feels. The record shows he took the blows and did it Bert's way. Oh. Great Thank you. fucking episode. Thank you very much. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Todd Glass, Sarah Silverman, I fucking love you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. That was fucking incredible. I, I have one more thing. I know I should have. <laughs> no, no, no. Something's burning. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.